Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Um, today I have a couple of different kind of t-shirts that I'm going to walk through. I got a really exciting mud dye shirt, which is this one. And actually that completes, I thought it completed, but it almost completes my Visvim natural dye t-shirt collection, which I've started kind of for myself. So I have my indigo dye, I've got my cochineal dye, then I got my mud dye shirt. I realized after talking to some people on Instagram, um, some of you guys I'm sure that kind of like also watch my videos here, that I'm also missing the veggie dye. So I have, <laughs> I have to add the veggie dye to my collection. So I guess that's the next one that I'm looking for. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to post a quick video here to talk about some of these new kind of pickups. Um, again, this is a, a mud dye Henley. Um, you can see the color here. I think it's really cool kind of seeing it in contrast um, to some of the other natural dyes. I think that these three shirts kind of as a whole look really great together and are a really uh, good kind of foundational um, wardrobe piece. Again, as I said in my previous video, um, the indigo dye one is by far my favorite. I just like wearing blue. I think it goes with a lot, um, but this has become uh, kind of a new favorite. The red one, the cochineal dye, I don't wear as much just because it's kind of, I think I'll like it more when the color fades a little bit, when it maybe becomes a little bit less intense, but you can kind of see like, um, this is a pretty vibrant red, as I said in my previous video. Um, yeah, so that's the, the cochineal dye. So this is my new pickup. It's the mud dye Henley. Um, some additional kind of details about this one that make it different are, I think this predates, and perhaps actually some of you guys might be able to help me out. I think that this predates the Indigo Camping Trailer collections. Um, so on these other two, the Indigo Dyed and then the Cochineal Dyed t-shirts, um, they just have the standard tag at the bottom. So let me show you guys what that looks like. Um, so on those t-shirts, they have just the standard, like, there's them, uh, let me see if that's coming out well. Yeah, Free International Laboratory, Cubism, tag at the bottom, right? But on the uh, on the Mundi shirt, which you can kind of see here, give a little bit of a preview. You can see the kind of ghost tag made in Japan. It also features, I think these are wood buttons. I'm gonna try to show you guys. I'm pretty sure these are wood buttons. It's got like a placard with four buttons. But what I was saying is that at the bottom, you have this kind of um, symbol. I was thinking about this for a little while, actually. I I noticed this um, like kind of symbol or little tag almost on a couple of other older Visvin pieces. Um, and I was kind of curious about it, but kind of thinking about it, and someone please correct me if I'm wrong, I think these are all the different natural dyes that Visvin offers. So you got your indigo dye, you got your veggie dye, you got your cochineal dye. And then I think that's another indigo dye at the, on the other side. I thought that was pretty cool. I actually didn't realize that. Um, but that seems to me to be what this kind of represents. And then again, let me just show you in comparison to another Bisvim shirt, what that looks like. So these are the, this is on the standard, like any kind of Bisvim shirt you typically get, you have that tab versus the natural dye kind of uh, moniker here. So I'm pretty sure that that's the old way that Visum used to signify that a shirt was natural dye. I don't know why they stopped doing that. Maybe someone in the comments has some other idea about maybe why they stopped doing that. Um, but yeah, you can see a really beautiful like mud dye shirt. I think you can get some other mud dye shirts from some other companies. Um, I'm a huge Visum fan, so I just really like this shirt. Um, I bought this in a kind of a bundle deal online. So I got two additional shirts at the back, right over there, that I'll, I'll talk about in a sec as well. Um, I typically wear, I'm, let me go in front of the camera. I'm like 6'1". I typically wear, I mean, I can kind of squeeze into different vision <laughs> sizing. Um, I was talking to some of you guys on Instagram and I typically wear like a two or a three in Visvim. I have a, I have a size one outerwear piece. Um, I have two size one outerwear pieces, which tend to fit a little bit bigger. Um, and, you know, most of my stuff is kind of size two or three, which is kind of medium slash large. This um, mud dye piece is actually size four. 
um, which I was a little bit nervous about, to be honest, at the start. Um, a little nervous that this wouldn't fit in well, but I really like how that looks. Um, check out my Instagram if you want to see kind of how that looks. Um, yeah, really enjoyed how this looks. So in that bundle deal, I got this mud dye piece, which is awesome. And I've never had one of these older um, Visvim pieces with the natural dye kind of symbol at the bottom. So if someone knows more information about this, I don't know if this is before a certain year they started doing this. I don't know why they stopped. Um, would be kind of curious to learn more. So those are my three natural dye t-shirts. Again, I've got my indigo dye, which is my favorite. I can kind of show you guys a little more detail here too as well. It's my indigo dye one. It's kind of, you can see it's a little bit worn. Um, it's my indigo dye shirt. Really awesome. I got my Coach Neil dye shirt. Oops, looks a little crazy. But little two button undone action there. This one I like that it has the Visvim Free International Laboratory button detail, which I think is cool. And then again, finally we have the mud dye. Whoops, sorry guys. I keep dropping my camera. I've done that before in old videos. Um, yes, and then I got my mud dye piece. Oh, sorry about that guys. Going on a little bit of a ride, you know? Got my mud, bite, mud dye piece. Um, here, which is also super cool. This one, unlike the cochineal dye, doesn't have any sort of branding on the buttons. And again, these buttons look kind of like wood to me. I'm not entirely sure if that's what they are, but they look kind of like wood to me. Cool. So those are my three natural dye pieces. Um, now I want to go through two additional shirts that I was able to get. Um, this one is just a standard white t-shirt. Um, Nothing, nothing super exciting about that. Um, it doesn't have the ghost tag at the back. You can see here. But it is a Visvin piece. And at the bottom, you have this really cool detailing that you can see. It's like little cars. So I think that that's kind of super cool. It's like little brown slash red cars. You get the standard tag that you'd expect here. And this piece is a size four as well. So someone was selling kind of size four Visvim shirts. I got this one. Typically not a huge white t-shirt uh, person. I'm always a little nervous that they're gonna get like kind of destroyed, um, but this is a cool one to add, especially since we're in quarantine and I'm at home a lot. So if I'm drinking coffee or whatever, I could be a little more careful. Um, and then finally, the final t-shirt that I picked up is this one. So this is actually really exciting in that it's my first um, ICT piece. So let me just back up a little bit here. Maybe you can see a little better. This is a another white t-shirt, very, very similar to the other one, except that this is an Indigo camping trailer piece. So you can tell that by the Indigo tag here at the neck as well as the Kofu fabric on the bottom. So that's the part about this t-shirt that I think is super cool. Um, so you can see this really beautiful, I'm pretty sure this is vintage Kofu fabric at the bottom of the shirt. This one doesn't have any sort of Visvim branding at the bottom. And actually looking at it, it has this kind of exposed stitch or seam on the side. Sorry about that. But yeah, really beautiful kind of vintage Kofu fabric the bottom, again, you have your, your ICT indigo fabric patch there. No additional writing anywhere on the shirt. This one also is a size four. I've not noticed any sort of difference in terms of the tags um, for this ICT piece versus the standard Visman mainline um, stuff. So I guess it's just kind of like the indigo tag at the neck, that's the differentiating factor. So yeah, so super cool. Um, I'm really excited to to wear all these shirts. I've been wearing the mud dyed one a lot. Um, and then these two are just awesome, kind of like summer hanging out. These are the great jeans, uh, kind of white t-shirts. And then, yeah, those are the, those are kind of my pickups. I'm wearing just a Yoji Onodo t-shirt. He did a collab, uh, I think it's a yearly collab actually that they do with New ba uh, not New Balance, with um, New Era, the baseball hat kind of company. So they do baseball hats, they do t-shirts. 
Um, I have this t-shirt from, from one of the collections. I really like this one in particular. I like the silver script that you get on the Yoji shirt. It also came out, I think this year, um, with blue script instead of the silver script. So I have the, I have the silver script ones. Um, yeah, and then wearing my, got my Visvin, uh, trusty Visvin D14 jeans today. Uh, really like these, these are super loose, super comfortable, um, really awesome. So yeah, just wanted to do a quick um, pickup video for you guys um, and see what else is going on. I'm trying to take more pictures. I can actually kind of show you. I, uh, taking more photos on my Leica M8. So I recently, relatively recently, kind of acquired this camera and I've just been having an absolute blast um, taking pictures on it. It's definitely a bit of a learning curve. I came from the SLR world um, where, you know, there's a lot of auto, auto focus, you know, all those kind of functions on the camera. If you know about rangefinders um, and the, you know, the Leica kind of ecosystem, the whole thing is essentially manual. So you set your aperture, you set your shutter speed, you can set your ISO. There are some downsides about the Leica M8 and it being an older digital camera. So the ISO performance of higher ISOs isn't super great, um, but I've just been having an absolute blast. It takes amazing pictures. Again, you check out my Instagram. I've been taking a lot of pictures on my Leica M8. I uh, found it really helpful just to walk around and take pictures of buildings or the sky or people. Um, less so people since we're in quarantine, but I hope that, uh, you know, I'm able to take more pictures of friends and that kind of stuff soon. Um, yeah, really enjoy shooting on this camera. I just, uh, I got an Arte Dimano case for it, which is awesome. I don't know, um, if there's a better case manufacturer. In my previous video, I did a bit of a review of this case. And there's another case manufacturer, Luigi, who also, um, has amazing Leica as well as other kind of camera cases. But Arte de Mano is, from my research on the internet, uh, supposedly like the top notch one. They had made it in Korea, um, just really well made. So just been having an absolute blast shooting it. Um, yeah, and I wanted to actually show you guys the, the shutter sound so you can kind of hear what this looks like. So this is my Leica M8. And just listen to this shutter sound. Isn't that amazing? It's just so cool. If you're familiar with the M8, um, you know that you need a UV IR cut filter on them because sometimes when you're taking photos of you know black fabrics in particular, they can kind of come out a little bit uh, purplish. So you need this UV IR cut filter, which I have attached here. This is just kind of BMW um, made in Germany filter here to my camera lens. Uh, this is a seven artisans, 35 millimeter. Um, which I really enjoy. It's a pretty, pretty much the entry level <laughs> Leica M lens. So, you know, I would love to own Leica glass at some point, but at the current moment, I can't quite justify that expense. So for the moment, I'm just having an absolute blast shooting on this. You set it to F8. I'm practicing kind of street photography. You know, you set it to F8, you can adjust your, your range here, and then you can just kind of snap away. And it's such a pleasure. The Leica cameras, they just came out with the like a, a new Leica today, which is awesome. A new version of the M10. Would love one of those cameras if someone wants to <laughs> give me one, but just such a pleasure to, to deal with. You listen to the tactile nature of how the shutter speed is just so enjoyable to use. I like the Arte de Mano case because it has this little thumb grip. You get to hold it really well, really easy to take pictures. That's obviously a two second exposure, so it's a little bit longer. Um, yeah, that's a bit of a quarantine update. Been wearing my trusty Speedmaster pretty much every day. Um, swapping out the straps. This is just a standard um, kind of NATO strap that I'm using currently. But yeah, wear my Speedmaster out, take photos on my Leica, or my Visvim Natural Dye shirts. Hard to complain about that. So I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, please comment below how you're holding up, any new kind of t-shirts or clothes or something you've added to your collection. What are you doing to kind of stay sane during quarantine? Again, feel free to send me a DM. I think it's been really cool. A lot of people have sent me uh, direct messages on Instagram talking about Visvim or cameras or uh, photography, you know, all sorts of different things. So I think it's been a really great uh, 
little community that we're you know, trying to kind of form here with different people that have like-minded interests. So if you're someone that's interested in any of this stuff, feel free to send me a message. Just say hi, I'm gonna respond to everybody. Um, yeah, I just wanna create a sense of community. So leave a comment, give me a thumbs up, whatever you guys wanna do. I hope you're all doing really well. Hope to come out with some more videos soon. Someone requested a, and I might be getting a little long-winded at this point, but someone requested a camera. Um, you know how like if you're, uh, some camera videos, they walk around, take pictures, and then they film uh, what they're taking pictures of. So I think that that's a really cool idea. Um, been trying to figure out, I don't have any sort of GoPro set up or anything. I saw some people you can mount in the hot shoe, a GoPro, and then you can film and then take pictures and then show your final, you know, after Lightroom or whatever your editing process, you can show the, the pictures also. So I might try to do something like that. Um, yeah, I'm trying to figure it out. So hope everyone's doing well. It was very long-winded. Uh, stay safe, stay sane, and, you know, stay happy and do the best that you can with everything going on. Okay, talk to you guys soon.